Hello everyone. I don't know if you can hear me, but uh, we're stopping the session now. Um, let me know. Maybe just uh, give me a little wave. Yeah, thanks, Tommy. Can you hear my voice uh, clearly? Some some comments will help uh, me to know that I'm set up well. Uh, I see Tommy coming in. Winnie, can you help me to just uh, let me know if I you can hear me? Right, just a, a comment or what will will help me to know that. Because I'm using an external mic. Okay, good. Uh, let me just get have Tommy come in first. Let's see. Tommy. Hello. Yo. Hey, can you say something? <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, can you hear me? Oh, you, you, you can't? Oh, so actually, yes, yeah, I can't hear you actually. Um, I think it's got to be an issue with uh, my mic. Uh, let's see how do I do this. Uh -huh. hmm, okay. Just a second. I will try this again. Uh, maybe I won't use an external mic. Okay, my sound might be worse now, but I can probably, you guys can probably hear me better. Uh, I mean, at least I can hear you. Tommy, yeah, can you say something? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, can hopefully it's yeah. still clear in the sound. Um, cool. Uh, great. Uh, so, everyone, uh, welcome to this again. <laughs> right, we've been doing these uh, uh, sessions and I think it's, it's great to be able to chat with all of you. Uh, we have Tommy here today with us. Uh, Tommy, who is a recent graduate um, and also... Uh, I mean, personally, one of my favorite uh, student designers who have now, uh, you know, uh, already uh, graduated and, and um, instantly he's working with us at Stuck, uh, which is the agency that I run. Um, uh, so hopefully uh, we can answer some questions today and also uh, um, maybe give, have, have Tommy, you know, give you guys some uh, view around, um, you know, literally being, and being, being somewhat like a... a someone who has experienced the whole package already, you know, from, from year one to year four, uh, in that sense, and then um, to, to be able to tell you what it really seems like um, and, and, and what's, what's it like after, okay? Uh, let's look at uh, some of the questions that have come in. Uh, many, many questions have come in. Um, uh, uh, let's start with some that are, you know, uh, uh, great to begin with, uh, especially for Tommy. Um, okay, are there, let me pin this up. Tommy, hope you can see the question. Yeah, from I can see. Uh, KM Siang, right? Uh, are there any differences when poly grads are joining DID? Uh, I, I don't know if the rest of the participants can see the questions, but uh, but uh, yep. Are there any key differences when poly grads are joining DID? Mm. Tommy. Okay, I think especially for me, um, uh, because coming from NS also, yeah, serving the nation for after two years, um when I graduated from NY uh, Nanyang Poly. Yeah, so I think that during that period, um, I think the difference was uh, I wasn't really in, uh, in touch with uh, design as much as I could. Um, so coming into DID um, um, uh, after serving the nation, right? So it was a bit, uh, um, I had to adapt again, kind of readapt myself uh, to, to be in tune now in that sense. Um, yeah, but I'm not sure. I'm um, for JC. Um, I think because at least um, your I think because it's a four year course. The first year you go through um your foundations or your 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 model making, your sketching. Um, as for poly grads, um, if you're from ID trained, um, uh, back in poly, so uh, you kind of get that. Um, uh, you go straight into uh year two, so um, you kind of like skip that foundation. Uh, because it's a uh, you really clear that clear that in uh um poly. Uh, so um. So the difference is just that you're ship jumping into like um, the vertical studios, your projects, um, and other core mods that you have to take, Yeah. yeah. Um, I can chip in a little bit from a teaching standpoint, right? Uh, how do we uh, see maybe the key growth areas for poly students, and then also um, the others who are say JC, IB, um, uh, and such, right? Uh, I think poly students come in with quite some. Uh, ready skill sets for tangibly uh, visualizing, uh, actualizing, and then communicating their, their ideas. Um, now, uh, but in NUS, we, uh, I would say the poly students will be trained a lot more in uh, questioning every single decision that they are making before uh, they tangibilize these things. Okay, so uh, 
I think that kind of a investigative inquiry uh, sometimes uh, maybe in, in the JC education, the students are a bit more used to it. Um, however, the disadvantage then for the JC students is, you know, the moment they want to kind of like tangibilize anything, they are a little bit, um, a little bit uh, behind the, the poly students typically. Right? It's not always the case, but typically the, that, that's the case. So um, now uh, that has sometimes ex uh, uh, expressed itself as kind of a good combination when we have uh, different students from different backgrounds come together in a team. And they, 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 they influence each other, they uh, learn from each other, these, uh, these skills rub off on each other and then they kind of either learn to be more well-rounded uh, individually or they learn to form teams better. Okay, so that's what we, we've noticed. Uh, I'm, let me know, you know, any of, any of you have like, you know, uh, thoughts on the answers that we give to you and you want some elaborations, uh, feel free to just throw it into a comment. Uh, so that we, we catch it uh, quicker than our questions list, okay? Uh, but I'm going to jump into the other questions mm, as, you know, there are many, many, okay? So let's, let me just, <laughs> let me just have Tommy answer first. Let me pick the questions for Tommy. <laughs> this is a question for Tommy. Tommy, did you feel your poly background gave you some leverage? This is related to the, the, the question. Uh, so maybe yeah. a good, uh, a quick one from you would be good. Yeah, I think building off um, what Don mentioned, like, the the in terms of technical skills we may be like the hard skills are uh, yeah usually the po the poly uh, uh, grads um usually have that so called so called edge uh, yeah but for myself um yeah that's when I think during the the sharing I the previous sharing I, I mentioned about um I felt like I wasn't as confident in giving bold ideas so I guess that's the kind of like um the the balance um when we do group projects together um yeah they are, they are the the JC my JC peers uh could really come up with really creative ideas that I, I wasn't able to lah yeah back when, especially when I just came in uh to DID so but but that's when um being able to help them um communicate those ideas like actually um doodling them out like okay this is what you mean uh or or what not uh, just to to kind of like really build on those ideas oh. yeah so I think that was quite a uh, interesting dynamics ah. yeah um. Not say leverage, but um, it's it's a give and take. Yeah, it's how how you communicate them. Yeah. Cool. Um. Again, great. Uh, Tommy, question again. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like. I just um, press questions only. You know. Okay. Uh, having done ID in poly, has your approach to design changed? Um, I guess. Um, I think I was more um. Like really uh, problem solving kind of angle yeah back then i mean i still am kind of yeah i prefer it's a preference also sometimes um but i guess um throughout uh my time in did i learned to open up a bit more like with the kind of projects that i took a bit more um um it's not like uh there's a problem statement you know you have to show really try to address the 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 or solve the the, the issue la. yeah but um really um trying to angle things differently yeah in 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 um coming up more creative solutions uh, yeah i think that, that was kind of like uh, how i took my mindset also yeah not to see everything as a problem uh, but also an opportunity to maybe um uh, um change some certain views you know um with let's say redesigning a, a certain object or um would redesigning an object be the best way yeah it may not be you know um so that's kind of like how I kind of took my um, that sensitivity lah. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna answer another one that's uh, uh, maybe more related to recent uh, developments uh, with the common curriculum that uh, you know is happening between uh, design and engineering. Uh, certainly, some of you might be asking questions around like you know uh, this I eat banana walnut cereal. <laughs> uh, uh, person uh, who is asking, would it be advisable to take a minor with ID, the workload, are there restricted minor choices? Uh, I don't know a lot of the details precisely, but let me just share overall as a, as a strategy what's going on, right? The reason for the recent change to have this common curriculum is to enable you to um, do more uh, like a second specialization or discipline, right? Um, whether is it a minor or a major. Now, uh, it allows you to do more of that because uh, now some of the things that are originally compulsory in the DID program, uh, especially those that are a bit more specialized type of uh, 
uh, skill sets are made optional. So you can either do them still or you can choose to use that um, space by not doing them to do something else that you are perhaps more interested in or you strategically want to grow a, a second kind of a expertise in. Now, it is a good idea. It really is a good idea to have uh, multiple uh, areas of expertise uh, in these uh, um, uh, times, right? Because uh, from a design standpoint, we've observed very much that uh, a lot of the new opportunities are in the spaces in between, right? Between disciplines. Uh, in the single silos, um, not to say it simplistically, but it sometimes feels a bit like uh, what can really be innovated, you know, uh, has already been done. It's not exactly like that, but uh, the tendency is that most of these are already solved in that way. Um, and you, you, being someone who has uh, two expertise, you see the connections between uh, two, two, two different areas, and that's a bit more uncommon, and therefore you spot more new things, okay? So definitely uh, designers who have one to two different, uh, um, or rather one to two extra different uh, interest areas, uh, uh, being multi-curious, you uh, have access to certain kinds of uh, uh, opportunities that uh, the rest maybe have less, right? But that that said, right? Um, you know, uh, I I still I, I still believe that um, uh, being really really good at design uh, in itself uh, is, or rather, specializing very very deeply in it in itself uh, still has a lot of value, and uh, in fact. Uh, Almost in a strange, contradictory way, uh, you, by being a specialist in design, you actually are a specialized generalist. You know, <laughs> so yeah, it, it really depends on whether you want to intentionally carve a second or third uh, so-called pillar. Uh, but most of the time, as a designer, you have to connect the dots across many, many uh, domains. All right. So yeah, the answer to to yours is, uh, I think if you can manage it, uh, uh, certainly, right. Um, the, and, and now the new uh, changes are enabling you to do it even more possibly. Okay, hopefully that answers the question. Um, let's look for more questions. Okay, I'm just going to give some answers quickly to those a bit more logistics ones so that everyone who has same concerns can get it uh, answered. Now, um, this one. Uh, so Tommy, I think you don't need to answer this. <laughs> okay. so, so yeah, you know what the odds of getting an interview if you have GPA requirements that uh, our GPA doesn't meet the requirements. Um, no, we we interview a lot more people than the uh, the number of people that we take. So uh, the the key tip is uh, if design really is somewhat important for you, you find that you have some level of interest and uh, uh, passion in it, right? Uh, apply for it because. Uh, the GPA that, that is the cutoff is, of course, not the cutoff we use for the interview. That we interview a lot more people than that. And once you get into the interview, right, uh, the interview is the key thing that matters. Okay, so somewhat of a little cheat code here, <laughs> you know, uh, to, 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 um, yeah, to escape a bit of the GPA requirements is to uh, hopefully be able to secure an interview, which is, of course, still uh, uh, GPA dependent, but you do have a good chance Right, uh, to get into interview, even if your GPA doesn't yet meet the requirements. And of course, we are all guessing every year uh, what is the exact cutoff is just determined by the whole cohort that applies. All right. Uh, hopefully, Aloysius, that's a clear answer for you. Um, now, uh, let's see. Yeah? Uh, great uh, question that is good for Tommy to answer from wannabe try hard design <laughs> designer, right? Uh, uh, Tommy, yeah, this probably is best answered by you because then it's uh, what resources do, I do to kickstart my ID journey. Mm. Mm. Okay, uh, I think I think there are plenty, a lot of resources now uh, online. Yeah, that that you can find out about ID. I think more so compared with when I started. I think especially in the social media, um, we talk about Instagram, um, or even YouTube tutorials of um like um like learning how to use uh. 3D softwares. Um, some some of them also uh, teach how teach you how to do um, sketches and all that. So so I think that's a good a way to kind of like kickstart to to understand like at least a, a bite size for yourself to to know what are these tools uh, useful for uh, when you at least come into the uh, into I, uh, DID. Yeah. So especially if you're doing group projects and how how you want to communicate with uh, your team members also things like that you you kind of like pick up. Uh, there are a lot of resources out there um, right now. Um, I think you can 
yeah, it's a simple Google or YouTube search, how to, uh, how do I uh, do sketching or whatever it is. So, uh, yeah, I think even in DID also, because um, a lot of it is self-taught in that sense. Yeah, for all these uh, hard skills, if you really want to go deep into it, then uh, you really have to find out for yourself, uh, um, uh, which is a good thing. Yeah, so, so you're curious at the same time uh, to kind of develop this, uh, these skills. Uh, yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. Mm, do I have anything to add about this? Um, I would suggest uh, for everyone, uh, whether you're already knowing that you somewhat uh, applying to DID, or you have some keen interest to explore, right? Uh, or somehow you've got a confirmed position uh, because uh, you applied a year ago or something like that. Um, I think it's good to uh, just get exposed more to you know what design really is, how designers think, right? What kind of work does uh, what what kind of work do designers do? Because I think there is a lot of misconception. Right. Um, and since since design itself is a term that has been evolving over the years, I think uh, getting immersed in that uh, will be really helpful. Right, for you to start well, so that you're not starting uh, the course uh, trying to figure out what design is in the first place. Of course, in your journey, you will still be figuring that out. But uh, a lot of uh, baseline information you can already um, uh, get easily, like Tommy mentioned, uh, before you even start. Okay. Uh, let's go for another one. Mm. Okay, long story kind of question, okay? Uh, from Simping, <laughs> Simping for NUS Industrial Design. How has DID evolved, right? Uh, Tommy can tell you what is it like now. Uh, I can tell you what is it like in the past till now, right? Uh, from how I have seen it. But I think it's more interesting to have Tommy explain his perspective of what is it like now first. Okay. Oh. <laughs> uh, hmm. Because if I explain, then you, I, you know, I'm basically giving that whole so called history of evolution and then. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I lock yeah. your answer in the spring bucket, right? So it's good that you go first. Huh? Yeah, I, th I think um, for me, when, when I came into um, direct, port, uh, direct year two, um, uh, that it was my first experience like, learning uh, talk about. Um, like vertical studios, like learning from like peer learning, or even with your seniors and all that. So, so it was quite a, a, a not say culture shock, but but in a sense, the the experience was uh, it was very useful. Yeah, I think um, being able to um, uh, pick the minds uh, from your seniors uh, and really um, 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 building on that, right, uh, really helped me. And then when I become a senior, also, uh, I think. Um, being able to share this knowledge of, of my own experience and the struggles that I've gone through um, um, really helped uh, throughout the process. I think that's also a very important life skill that I learned uh, because um, maybe next time you might have a project collaborator uh, or think people you work outside of um, DID itself. So this, this kind of things you kind of, um, you, uh, it's not just um, going for lectures and all that you can learn. Uh. I think it was quite interesting. Um, um, from from my time uh, in the ideal, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, I'm gonna not answer that question first and come back to it shortly. Just because there are comments that were going on, and just wanted to acknowledge them. Uh, JDLKZ saying that I can't sketch, so here's the thing: everyone talks about sketching when we decide to enter a design environment. How can I be creative with the ways of practicing sketching, especially for someone? And the message cuts off anyway. Um, uh, to hear to maybe address your concern somewhat uh sketching is something um that is uh taught and also self taught uh, on different levels uh in DID um you don't really need to be able to sketch when you come in uh not at least at the start but of course it's a very important tool uh in design uh it's it's not hard to pick it up you know uh, and uh design for sketching for design is um, not always sketching for sketching a pretty sketch, okay? So, uh, oftentimes, uh, the most crappy little doodle uh, that captures the idea and communicates it with yourself well is the more important uh, ability to, to, to have. Of course, Tommy can sketch really, really well, right? So that's a different case altogether. And then, therefore, he has the ability to use it for presentation-level sketches, but uh, it is not a necessary skill. Uh, yeah, a lot of uh, successful designers... Uh, uh, internationally and also from DID, can't sketch. Okay, <laughs> yeah. 
uh, if, if we're talking about the traditional form of sketching, right? Uh, now, I see some other comments too. Uh, there's one that was below, wanted to acknowledge it. Xavier, uh, Aloysius, you were saying Minor Details Podcast is pretty good. Okay, great. You're sharing a recommendation. Okay, great. Yeah. No other yeah. comments at this point. I'm going to answer the same question. I'm going to give a bit more of an overview. Um, now, uh, just for context, uh, some of you might know, uh, and I think Simping, you're asking this question uh, because you might know that I was also from uh, DID. Um, that's like 17 years ago. <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah, so I studied DID in 17 years ago, uh, graduated about 13 years ago, uh, gone on to work in different places overseas, came back uh, to, to Singapore to set up stuff, and then also uh, was asked to teach in DID, and now I've been teaching for 10 years. Right? Um, so that's quite, uh, quite some time. I've seen how DID evolved from uh, my time as a student, and then also seeing it evolve over the past 10 years. Now, I've only one main over arcing statement to make and then I can go into details later. Now, uh, I've seen DID evolve and DID really evolves fast. Okay? Um, to a certain extent, it, it evolves in line with design evolving. Okay? Design as the whole field of design evolving. And sometimes maybe I would say it evolves kind of more at the forefront of that evolution, which is probably a really good sign for an academic institution because most of the time, um, you find that uh, um, as a teacher, uh, school curriculum is not something that is easy to update, right? Uh, you, you can learn something and then like, by the time you graduate, that thing is outdated and then the, the school finds it difficult to update that because there are many uh, structures around um, quality control, you know, what is being taught, what's the curriculum, uh, consistency. Now, DID is very special because of, uh, and I think it's really unique uh, in this right uh, even compared to many design schools, um, in the sense that the curriculum is designed to be uh, ultra flexible uh, according to what the leaders who teach in it, right, uh, ascertain to be the most important, the most relevant things uh, now in the industry, right? And so you will see um, uh, that, especially if you look at the spectrum of works, it's almost like, what, what are we doing, you know? <laughs> yeah, there isn't one thing that we, we can identify as DID because every semester the things evolve to be the latest cutting edge uh, type of work. Whether it's from the teacher's interest, the teacher's uh, uh, sense making of what is going on in the world or from industry collaborations. And of course, industry partners will only come in and bring the latest things to work on. They don't want to work on something old, right? Our curriculum has that room for that and that's uh, what I really appreciate and uh, so why I continue to teach in DID because we have that space to do that. I think the students benefit from that relevance of the, 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 the program. Okay, now, um, now talking about DID as a whole or design field as a whole, uh, as, as a whole, right? Um, the uh, design is one of those things whereby uh, the needs and requirements are constantly uh, like in inflation. Back when I was a student, you know, uh, when you do a physical problem solving object and when you go beyond the engineering requirements or the functional requirements of, hey, this needs to fulfill that core function, and you add something else like an added consideration to say, hey, what about the secondary users? What about how it feels like beyond how it works? That is already like, wow, a big plus. That was 17 years ago, right? Um, now, more and more uh, new requirements start to flow in, like, uh, is it intuitive to use? Does it use the most minimum of materials? Does it fit with culture? Does it you know, evolve with the times? Does it you know, uh, now uh, have more and more concerns around sustainability. You know, does it fit in the contextual system of that whole uh, problem? And then, of course, sometimes even the bigger question, uh, designers as curators or gatekeepers of what comes in the world, right? Should this object exist? Does it, what does it say about, uh, you know, humanity if we, if we choose to put an object like that out into the world? No, design constantly uh, evolves, and, evolves and expands to consider more and more things. So uh, the good thing is I've noticed DID over the years uh, has had that same parallel expansion right? with the multiple uh, rather large teaching team with very diverse voices. Uh, that kind of considerations have uh, uh, always been, um, you know, uh, uh, yeah, that added uh, perspective. And that's why you see students, they tend to comment on things like, oh, when you come into design or DID, right? The teachers keep asking <laughs> all kinds of questions. You know, every day they ask you, you solve this problem, they keep thinking about like 10 other questions that you haven't really addressed. Um, there's the whole sharpening and that whole uh, 
um, growth in awareness of you know uh, the needs of design to be um, uh, that sophisticated and that uh, inclusive, right? So that's how DID has been evolving. That's also how design has been evolving, right? Uh, hopefully, this answers uh, same thing's question. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Jian, you have a question. How important is industrial design in today's world? Um, I first we have to kind of get a bit clear with the term industrial design. Industrial design, um, if you mean it as how it was traditionally defined, uh, maybe twenty years ago, where it deals with a physical product made through mass production, right? Uh, now. Uh, and therefore, the word industrial, right, in terms of like serialized production for industry. Um, now, if you kind of take that term uh, first as a key question we answer, um, uh, firstly, that term has evolved over time, right? It has uh, now, at least in DID, includes so much more, includes uh, software, includes uh, the ability to analyze uh, services um, and the uh, experience flow that one consumes that service uh, goes through. Right, uh, so so that 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 word uh, industrial design at uh, DID is a lot broader than that. And when the moment that you consider that breadth of that uh, that term, um, then to be honest, you cannot escape from uh, industrial design in in the world uh, that you live in. Um, if you if you check out one of the uh, student uh, or rather alumni uh, videos that was shared, uh, I think last night we just posted it. Uh, from Celine Chu, right, uh, in our YouTube channel. Check it out, right? Uh, she is, uh, I would say, one of our more successful uh, graduates. Uh, and now she's leading a design team at LinkedIn uh, in California. And that is a tremendous uh, achievement, right? Uh, her kind of uh, point um, of uh, view on this is that you almost cannot escape design or industrial design because um, everything that is being used by people um, if it's somewhat nice to use and there are no frustrations uh, in it, uh, it is because design was there to get rid of those frustrations. So on a certain level, every single thing that you touch and see, um, whether it's a software, physical object, a space, right, um, or something that you wear, uh, design and industrial design consideration are, are quite important. Okay? Um, yeah. So, uh, Tommy, how about you? Um, I think you pretty much summed it up. Yeah, I mean it's it's pretty much a part of um uh, your every our everyday living. Uh, yeah, um, and I think the is it me or is it Tommy? Sir, uh, maybe someone can give an indication because I don't know whether I'm breaking up or is Tommy breaking up. Okay, so it's Tommy actually. <laughs> Tommy, your connection is a little bit okay. So... <laughs> Tommy, your connection is a little bit down. Okay, we 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 will just give Tommy some time to maybe come back again. Um, now, uh. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to jump in a little bit before he comes back on this same question. Uh, basically, you know, one of the reasons why sometimes we are a little bit uh, concerned about is design or industrial design important. Um, the okay, Tommy has really left. Let's see if we can bring him back in soon. Let's see. Let's, let's okay. Let's wait. Let me answer the question first. All right. Um, one of the reasons why we sometimes feel like design may not be important, right? Is because most of the time when design works well, we don't notice it. Right? You will see that that some of our students say the same thing. Right? It's only when design is uh, poorly done that you oh sh gosh, the design is horrible. <laughs> okay, so um, maybe start to pay attention a little bit more to the things around you uh, and notice how uh, things that you actually like to use um, and ask the question like who composed that experience, who decided for so this button to be here. This handle to be there, this you know color to be as such, right? Most of the time, when design works well, it's invisible, 
All right. Uh, that doesn't mean it's not important. <laughs> okay, I don't know if Tommy's going to come back in, but uh, let's let's see. Let's see. Yeah, uh, it's Tommy. Tommy here. Nope. Is oh, let's see. He's here. Let's send him a request to join us again. Okay, we'll let him come on when he comes on. Um, going to answer some other questions. Okay, wannabe try hard designer. <laughs> uh, what are key competencies aspiring ideas should hone or develop hard and soft skills wise? Um, I would say uh, a key one that is uh, somewhat of a mix between hard and soft skill um, is the ability to learn things really fast, go deep really fast, and then uh, learn many, many things. Right? I think that is a really important uh, skill. Uh, I like to uh, emphasize uh, from a soft skill standpoint um, a certain curiosity about human beings because uh, most of the time, uh, the things that you do are either for human beings to use directly or they are on some systemic level serving humanity as a whole, right? So uh, an ability to be curious about human beings and to learn about how people work, right? Uh, in terms of how the psyche works, uh, it's an important soft skill. Now, uh, again, things that are between soft and hard skills um, are things like creativity, lateral thinking, which I think are, are useful. Um, hard skills um, would be anything that... Uh, at that point in time, right, when you engage with design, is uh, an efficient means to tangibilize, uh, actualize, or communicate, you know, visibly or physically uh, your ideas. I think those are important uh, skill sets to have because else it gets trapped in your own mind and your verbal dialogue and others may not be able to uh, communicate, evaluate, or build on those ideas uh, with you, right? Sometimes it's also difficult if you don't have the hard skills to uh, tangibilize your own thoughts and you can't uh, process it you know in, with yourself and now we see Tommy coming back in let, let me just uh, uh, send him the request okay so other soft skills that are um, not just going to serve you well for ID um, uh, it's just the ability to work with people um, uh, that will be an important soft skill uh, for any job I think moving on especially uh, when automation uh, becomes more uh, apparent, okay? All right. Sorry about that. No worries for me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, Tommy, your question. Okay. Does DID involve <laughs> any presentations? Uh, yes, <laughs> pretty much. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you talk about presentation can be sharing even uh, within your group mates uh, or within your project. Um, yeah, with your like just to share updates uh weekly updates i think that's a, a good practice also for us um when we kind of um do that yeah because um kind of um uh trains us to how how do you communicate uh, uh what you're trying to do uh in a more in a consistent manner uh. um so um until until the very uh, like until like week 11 or week 13 yeah when you have your your final presentation um then uh, that's how, how do you do it the most simplest way for everybody to understand what you're trying to do or what solution you're trying to bring. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think, I think for, especially for those who are more uh, soft-spoken, yeah, you definitely have to get out of your comfort zone yeah, in, in order to, uh, to do that. Lah. Yeah, eventually, yeah. Mm. Um, be, yeah. For individual projects especially, yeah. So that's something... Uh, one has to go through, but if you have a group, then someone is better at presenting or learning how to um, knowing how to verbalize your the ideas. Then uh, that's great. Then you can um, use each other's strengths uh, in that manner. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, presentation literacy is one of the most important skills um, that you can have, uh, whether or not you are in DID, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You know. Um, it's, it's uh, you know, like Warren Buffett said, it, you know, the, uh, if anything, you know, it's, it's, it's the ability to communicate, else everything that you have, your brilliance or everything is just stuck in your own mind, right? Yeah. So, uh, and, I, and I do think that DID is one of the best places to learn uh, 
presentation literacy. Uh, now, uh, why I say that uh, and why does DID have so much presentations? Um, you know, at DID, we are fundamentally making things that don't exist. We are trying to bring things that don't exist into being, right? Uh, and these things will stay uh, in your minds uh, as a conception, right? Um, and so to be able to present or to be able to kind of like uh, say things that don't exist such that people can envision it, can imagine alongside it with you, uh, or to even evaluate it, uh, you have to be good at presenting. Or at least, uh, you know, have that as a tool, tool set that you are constantly polishing up. Okay, so DID is a great place to learn presentations um, uh, and it's a necessary skill. Okay. All right, great. Uh, this is a good question. Uh, Tommy, you want to say answer this first? Uh, you don't, you I don't see the question. Skill that I see anyway. Oh, you don't see it? Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. so maybe you need to put it. Do you see now? Yeah. Uh, I've pinned no. it already. Do you see it? Okay, let me let me read the question for everyone, right? Okay, sure. Uh, basically, Simping asked, are there examples of students who come from a huge deficit in skills and design sense yet are able to thrive? Mm, I think this is like over time um, when you're you're when you come into DID, yeah. Then the the uh, you get to. I mean, you go through the experience. Uh, I mean, it's like growing pains, or really, um, <laughs> yeah. So, so in the sense, you you're you're really um, um, getting down to the practice, uh, yeah, to being able to um, uh, experience it. Uh, then, um, of course, then there's the thing about peer learning. Yeah, I think uh, that's one also important thing um, um, for 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 anyone who's coming in um, to to be curious and then how to ask uh, yeah ask around like if you're not sure of anything then um that's how you kind of grow yeah so what's the best way to do things um or uh, to to sketch a certain thing or even um, um yeah generating ideas yeah what's the best um approach uh doing po using post-its or you know uh various ways uh, so so uh, along along the way you kind of like um, um pick this up yeah yeah so i think yeah, it's definitely possible. Uh, yeah, after a while then, um, I've seen, seen peers like after, um, they, you see them do things quite effort, effortlessly. Yeah, then you compare them when they first started, right? It's, it's, uh, they struggled. Uh, so the, there's a certain steep learning curve, uh, but it's, it's a good thing. Yeah, when you come, come here. Yeah. Okay, simply I'm going to give you an example. The example is myself, okay? So if I were to be really candid, I'll tell you a little bit of a, uh, embarrassing stories. Uh, when I joined DID, um, firstly, I didn't know what the course was about. I stumbled into it uh, thinking I was designing factories or machines, right? Um, uh, so I came in with less, uh, almost a bit of a accidental uh, uh, entry into DID. Um, and of course, I, I quite liked it. But nonetheless, uh, coming from somewhat of a, like a science background, uh, this is like 18 years ago, right? Um, uh, you feel inadequate you, because like I couldn't draw for nuts, right? Uh, and then we have uh, classmates who, you know, have been uh, students in uh, arts uh, background, um, uh, you know, all their life and, and everything they seem to draw just looks nice, right? Uh, the, and you will compare, right? Uh, of course, nowadays when we are more uh, mature as designers, we realize that sometimes a very ugly doodle can be a much better idea than a beautifully done sketch, right? But then in those early days, you will certainly um, feel that like, wow, that sketch being so nice means that person is more creative. And indeed, some of them are also very uh, um, well trained with the creative conception of ideas uh, standpoint. So you feel a little bit uh, insecure and uh, you, will, you will always kind of like, yeah, be, 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 be a little bit uneasy. Um, now, uh, I... I mean, I share this candy story because um, uh, in, to a certain extent, uh, I guess I have personally pushed through that, um, that, that uh, inquisitiveness on like, why do people or how are people able to make creative ideas uh, almost like a talent that they have um, has uh, made me find my own way, you know, to carve my own way to systemize uh, uh, ways to create ideas, right? And therefore, that 
exhibits itself in an ability now to teach others how to systematically create ideas. So uh, there are some gains in, in I think, some of these uh, grappling or, 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 or struggles that I think uh, are not necessarily a bad thing. Right? I mean, certain kind of uh, deficiencies can lead to certain kind of strengths in future. Right? Um, now, I would, I would just give you some proof. You know, um, uh, when, when I was a year three student, right, uh, because I know my big gap is, is sketching uh, at that point in time. So uh, while many of my, my classmates were choosing to go to places that I think from a design standpoint, people may feel more ideal uh, exchange uh, universities, right? Go to Europe and stuff. Uh, I intentionally chose to go to uh, China, right? Uh, during my third year because uh, it was the only school that allowed me to uh, join in the transportation design program for my exchange, which is the car design program. And you can imagine, especially some of you are familiar with design uh, or design education. If you can't draw as a car designer, this game over, right? It's a bit different from industrial design. Um, so it was really funny uh, in my uh, exchange program. I remember the first few days that we were there in the school um, and the teacher asked us to start to conceptualize some kind of like van uh, in sketches and of course everyone else around us would draw my sketch was this size uh, this size of my thumb <laughs> pinky fingernail <laughs> yeah just because you're very self-conscious and you can't draw anything that's bigger size you can't draw at all right um i remember the the teacher who was in charge of uh, two of us who were both from industrial design in singapore and we were drawing that fingernail size uh don't know vehicle um he told us to stay back and uh, from that day he said Every day we have to submit 20 A4 size sketches to him. Every single day in my exchange, right? So by the time <laughs> my exchange finished, I had one mountain of sketches. Uh, uh, in a, on a certain level, I'm quite thankful for that. Uh, but just to let you know, uh, there was a huge deficit in skill for me, right? Uh, during uh, my, my, my time in school, right? And even after you're still kind of like uh, building up these things, uh, you, you gain that from working with more people and of course pushing yourself, lah. Right. Uh, I, I would say same thing, you know, um, if you consider uh, that to a certain extent, I, I feel like I'm alive in this design industry, you know, I, I, I feel like this is my expertise I'm thriving now, right? Uh, then uh, I'm an example, right, of uh, that huge deficit. Okay? Okay, so, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, hopefully that uh, gives you a bit of proof. Uh, and it's not just me, a lot of uh, people around, uh, we see uh, that growth. I think okay. that was my experience, yeah, back, back in Bali also, yeah, coming yeah. into ID also to know what's going on, yeah, then just hours and hours of just learning how to sketch, yeah, doodling and copying, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. All right, uh, let's see. Thanks. Okay, Tommy, you first. Is uh, it necessary some... for yeah. design ideas or concepts to have a story behind it? Hmm, um... It's definitely good to have. I mean, there's always a starting point um, when uh, um, uh, whatever you're trying to communicate, the ideas you have, uh, how do you um, communicate to someone that doesn't know your 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 uh, your idea at all or like what you're trying to do. So I think um, being able to make it relatable uh, is quite important. Is definitely one of the more important ones. Um, that's why it kind of like um, there's this um, have this storytelling in that sense. Yeah. How how do you how does this uh, concept or idea is being generated um, from the can be from the starting point where it it could be a problem or what you're trying to be inspired by um, and uh, how do you translate that into a solution or opportunity um, then uh, I think that's it's important uh, it's, it's, it's an essential uh, essential um, skill to, to, to have uh, yeah because if not, it's, you're trying to bridge gaps and trying to get people to understand uh, why the reason for designing certain things. Um, if you can't do that, then you'll be like scratching their head also. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Aloysius, uh, this is an interesting question and I uh, would say that um, actually the dialogue in school sometimes is like that, right? Uh, between teachers and students, uh, we, we talk about these things, right? And... Uh, um, hopefully, we are giving you a sense of how uh, uh, you might experience school to be like. So, I'll give you my answer for this. Um, firstly, I would say, um, when you say story, do you mean presenting, right? Uh, in a compelling manner. Uh, now, we've established uh, earlier on that 
you know, uh, presentation skills are rather important in uh, design. Uh, and that's usually because you are trying to convey something that has not come into being, right, uh, to someone else. Right? And of course, the more vividly you can paint that, the more uh, um, it can be evaluated, it can be iterated, meaning modified and improved, right? Um, and sometimes uh, it takes, you know, um, many, many ideas to pick one in order for uh, that one to be uh, developed, right, into something. You cannot just develop every single thing to become real. So therefore, to give each, each idea its a fair kind of uh, analysis and chance, you have to be able to present them clearly at least. Now, story, if you're saying that, like, you know, there's some kind of... Uh, uh, narrative uh, story-like kind of explanation around uh, why something should exist. Um, that's just one form of presentation, right? And it is nonetheless probably one of the best forms of presentations uh, for human beings because we all resonate with, um, you know, what was the problem? How do we, you know, why, why is the problem such a big problem? You know, and then how was it struggle right, uh, to figure out a solution? And what was that aha moment that caused it to be solved? And then, you know, by the time we're listening to this, we're all rooting for that, that concept already because it's like we are somewhat sticked and following along in the journey, right? And then, of course, when, when, uh, when we see the aha moment uh, which, which uh, satisfies our mind, uh, we like to then also listen to uh, how that uh, victory right, of that concept uh, is is now uh, having implications in the results of it, meaning that oh, it has what kind of effects, uh, what kind of good effects. So that kind of narrative structure or story structure is just a really compelling way for normal human beings to uh, understand and uh, follow along you know, in, a, in a presentation. So um, I wouldn't say it is necessary Right, design ideas and concepts. They can be design ideas and concepts you know, with or without a story behind it. Um, but a story certainly makes it a lot more vivid and compelling, okay? So, um, storytelling, presentation literacy is uh, certainly an important skill to have uh, as a designer, okay? Yeah, but, but if, if you have some kind of questions like uh, those that I had when I was also as a student, like, can, you know, is a story frivolous? Uh, is, you know, telling a story uh, what design is all about? Um, no, I don't think so because I had also certain discomforts with concepts that seem to be just not really valuable but was just a story you know uh, that, 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 that made it seem like it uh, was of value um, I don't think you can sell something that has no inherent uh, uh, value on, of its own okay but certainly you can undersell something that is good by not being able to tell a good story around it so it's a good uh, skill to have right okay let's see uh, JDK, JDLKZ. Okay. How can I be creative with the ways of practicing sketching, especially for someone who has no design background? Um, we'll teach you. <laughs> yeah, in short, we'll teach you. I mean, we, we, yeah. there, there are ways, there are really ways to uh, do it. And Tommy, I know, you know, uh, has honed this skill really well. Both me and him, I think he will agree with you. We would say that um, uh, one of the most interesting uh, hurdles to overcome with uh, sketching well is to first be very comfortable with sketching uglyly, right? Uh, in yeah. fact, the moment that you can uh, be okay with your sketch looking horrible, that's the point where your sketch starts to look nice because there's a certain kind of confidence you know, in it that says, I heck care whether it looks horrible or not. I'm just expressing my idea. Those kind of sketches actually look a lot better than when, than when you see a designer trying to draw nicely. Right. That, that, you know, that elusive quality of the X factor in sketching uh, that you see sometimes, like, hey, why this guy's sketch just has that, you know, just that, that, that uh, you know, that, that spark, right? It's usually because they can't care less how it looks, okay? So that's a little tip, right? But uh, when you come in here, you know, we can dialogue on that more. Um, Tommy, anything to add? Yeah, I, th I think um, just don't get thrown off by what you see on like social media of like how people depict uh sketching yeah so like there's a very vast difference like uh communicative sketching and um like very render um, um all that 
copy marker or now even more uh, with digital sketching. Yeah, because you can always control Z, right? So you always <laughs> end up uh, correcting yourself. Um, so um, good practice yeah. is to start with like analog sketching. Yeah, so really um, there to just lines and uh, yeah. The so you get more confident in that in that manner, uh, much quicker. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. No, Tommy, you brought a, brought up a good point, and I think this is the thing that we have to demystify a little bit, right? Um, mm -hmm. and and Tommy was talking about the thing about you know sketching as a tool for thinking versus sketching as a you know presentation uh thing, right? Which is sometimes uh uh just for ego, right? You know, uh, yeah. you see all the nice um sketches. Uh, that you see on portfolios everywhere online for design when you look at that you can sometimes get a little bit like self-conscious like oh my gosh my my sketching is never like that now let me tell you a secret um in practice when you're really working nobody sketches like that okay um and then and give you a bit more secret things <laughs> um and, which i realized also you know in places that i've worked before right um when you when, you know when i've worked overseas uh, in some fancy consultancy, you look at the website and wow, the sketching is so nice. And then when you join them inside uh, the, <laughs> the, 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 for real, and you see the day-to-day -day sketching is actually really very functional and you just, it's just doodles that capture the idea, you know. Only when they need to kind of like um, make a portfolio, then they say, oh, project's done. Oh gosh, let's, let's make some nice sketches, you know. Then you sit down and you say, hey, this is the, my final product. Let me try to re-sketch it so that it looks really nice on the website. And you spend like... Five, engineer, yeah. Yeah, you spend like five hours trying to draw something really nicely just to make others feel bad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, but, but to be very frank, um, uh, no, we don't do that. And increasingly, less and less because, um, uh, you know, presentation sketching, while a really nice skill that I, I also uh, enjoy sometimes and also... Uh, I don't have anything against people who, who love to do it, right? Uh, it's really uh, a good art to, to have. Um, but to be honest, in day-to-day -day use, uh, it comes in almost uh, very little and much less uh, relevant now when you can move from a doodle very quickly to a very quick cat and a, a 3D render that is compelling, right? Uh, in the past, you really needed it because 3D rendering takes like forever, right? Now it's like way faster and there's a, sometimes a more practical tool to use, okay? Um, so again, uh, exposing secrets here. Um, even uh, my own thesis project as a student, uh, you know, the sketches are horrible throughout the whole process. When I finished the thesis, then I redrew everything just to, just to have it nice in my portfolio. I spent like a few days sitting down and just redrawing everything. Because now you know what you're drawing, of course you can draw it nicely. When you are, when you are actually exploring the design, Thank you don't you know what you're drawing. drawing. You're figuring out, right? So you have to you have to just go with the you know the quick 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 kind of the scribbles to to understand the, the issue. Now uh, J D L K Z. Hopefully um, that is um, yeah uh, insightful for you. Um, practicing sketching. Uh, you have to delineate between practicing sketching for presentation or practicing sketching for uh, idea development. Okay. All right, uh, let's see, more questions coming in. Okay, Tommy, for you, specifically. Yes. Hello, Tommy, out of all the design courses, why DID? I think, okay, because uh, previously I was um, uh, studying ID in Nanyang Poly already. So um, it was kind of like a bonus for me um, to try to... Uh, I applied for only DID actually, in fact, yeah. So uh, during when I was in uh, serving the uh, NS, yeah. So um, that was um, something that I wanted to try to see whether I can um, uh, develop um, this skill set, lah. Yeah. Then I think just looking at the when I saw the website and uh, the things that DID was doing, I think it's, it was definitely very different from what I was doing back in Bali. So um, that was kind of like a, I would say a no-brainer, yeah. But um, just an opportunity uh, to continue um, this, this journey for myself uh, as, a, as a designer. Yeah. Yeah. So, is there anything you want to elaborate for? Uh, I mean, it seems mm -hmm. like the question is a bit like between choosing schools and we're not here going to bomb other schools, right? That's not, yeah. that's not how we roll, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, because for myself, I, yeah, like I said, I didn't apply for other schools, so I cannot, yep. I cannot really um, yeah, weigh this, um, yeah. 
the, the any options uh, yeah but i think at that time i already knew i mean for id specifically um did was the the only school i think back then uh, yeah that was prominent uh, yeah hmm. yeah uh, maybe the next few days you will see some materials that we will release um about uh, more a lot more information about the real projects uh, in DID, okay? Uh, real student projects, real student testimonies, and also you will get to see a bit better the full teaching team, uh, including the ones who join us uh, on an ad hoc basis. Uh, then I think you can judge for yourself um, what is DID offering, okay? Um, I mean, sometimes beyond the marketing hype uh, or the nice big terms, uh, it's better to just see the real works, what the students really say, and then who is teaching here. Uh, I would just say that like, you might find that literally the whole industry of leaders are here at the ID. Okay? Um, so, so there's something to look out for in the next couple of days. Uh, now, I'm, I'm going to answer some other questions. Let's, let's pick up. Uh, Michael, is, can creativity be learned? That's exactly what I teach. Okay, so basically, um, I... Uh, I'm super passionate and I actually anchor most of this where we talk about making creativity learnable, okay? Um, so yes, I completely believe in that. Um, just because uh, it was a pet struggle for myself when I was a student and so now I teach it. Um, let's see, yeah. Uh, Simply has another question. How does one wrap around, or wrap one, one's head around learning engineering stuff required for ID, especially the ID? Now, uh, Quick one for you, um, because I know we're running out of time. Uh, you don't really try to wrap your head around every single thing because that's endless. Now, in industrial design, you have to learn a skill of being willing to learn what you need to learn and knowing what you need to learn at that point in time, right? <laughs> so, so if you try to go and wrap your head around every single thing, um, not, not really interesting, a bit dry. <laughs> um, but when you are in a project, and you realize, that, I want to do this kind of cool uh, movement in that thing uh, and I realized oh perhaps uh, in the animal world or in me mechanical engineering or in uh, some electronics uh, there is some similar stuff um, that's when you kind of purposefully search out and seek out this type of knowledge okay so uh, that's one thing that's very nice about ID is that you keep on uh, you will grow to be kind of like a mini expert of everything if you're inquisitive enough all right uh, Tommy anything to add while I look for yeah. that I, th I think um, because now it's, uh, I think there's this new thing about um, engineering and uh, design coming together. Like you all can choose modules, right? Um, but I think back then, um, it's all based on the projects. Uh, if it requires, especially I think that time when I did uh, Kickstarter, yeah, developing my own um, like reusable straw and all that. So mm -hmm. understanding the engineering, how to like, let's say injection mold or all that, right? So such things, I mean, um, in theory, you learn this, uh, there's a, uh, there's, um, like technology of design, yeah, but being able to apply it, yeah, so that's a whole different case uh, where you have to really um, go and seek out uh, this, this kind of information to, to make sure it's um, um, designed in a sound manner uh, that it really can actually um, be put for industrialization or anything like that, yeah, so, so I think that's something that you learn throughout the projects that you take on, uh, yeah, so uh, good to know, uh, good to know, yeah. Okay. Michael has a question, is industrial design more analytical or creative? Now, this is a great question. Um, I, I'll try to answer this in a cryptic way first, then I'll try to clarify it a little bit. Right? Actually, you will find that design is a really interesting field where you need the best of uh, both of this type of thinking. Um, in fact, uh, you will find that you need to be very creatively analytical, right? and in your analysis, you have to be very creative. Right, the, the, yeah. yeah, so, so it's, it's really that, right? Um, because sometimes creativity sometimes feels a bit like a big, big fuzzy space of a talent that just drops from nowhere. You know, you sit and wait for your idea. But to be honest, right, to operate this as a profession, you need to be able to tap into that almost on demand, right? And therefore, uh, you learn to structure your creativity, right? Uh, as an example, I was sharing, I think, the previous uh, live uh, uh, cast. Um, one of the, I think, students was asking uh, how to think out of the box and stuff, right? Um, and actually, this think out of the box thing, uh, as an example of learnable creativity, um, is a slightly scary concept for a lot of people because, okay, what if I can't see the box? You know, how do I think out of it, right? And then, you know, this idea of think out of the box sometimes throws you into this zone of feeling that, oh, I have to just keep trying random ideas. 
right? Actually, that's really difficult to do. But over time, as you learn the skills of creativity, right, you realize that the ability to think out of the box is not so much by trying to jump out of the box, is by trying to think inside better boxes. Okay? Then you will not be lost. So anyway, this is a little example, right? You know, something that we can more analytically or logically uh, overcome better by saying, oh, I know this box is like that, let me think inside it, right? Can be used, can be deployed to make you more creative if the boxes that you choose to think in are fundamentally uh, better boxes, more uh, interesting boxes or newer boxes than typical thinking, right? So, uh, Michael, the question, the answer back to you again is it is really both and in fact it is the, it is the to me, I think the true am amalgamation of this, these two uh, factors, right? And that's why most people struggle with design because uh, they are either one or the other. Uh, you know, they're inclined more towards one or the other and you have to kind of like try to patch the other side um, to, to be creative, to be kind of like fully creative, okay? Okay. <laughs> wow, very big questions today. Uh, let's see. Tommy, for you. <laughs> Any tips okay. for effective presentation of ideas? From a current design student and aspiring idea, uh, aspiring idea means that maybe you want to come here or I'm not very sure, but it's okay. Uh, Tommy? Effective presentation, is it? That... Yeah, tips for effective presentation of ideas. Hmm. Yeah, you, yeah. That, I'm just wondering what, what, um, yeah. Is it like, uh, through through what visuals? Um, yeah, I was, I'm not very sure. Yeah, but I mean, there's there's numerous uh, modes. I mean, now nowadays, uh, everything is going um on a, the digital. I mean, like I think currently we are using like Loom and all these uh, resources. How how um you have to learn video editing, um to craft your presentations or uh, doing um, kind of like pre-recorded things um, or even, um, yeah. So I think the question is a bit vague. <laughs> yeah, what's effect, yeah, what's effective presentation in terms of what, you know? Yeah, maybe okay. you can clarify that, yeah. L let me try to answer it from uh, the other standpoint by assuming that this is a bit like storytelling or convincing right. others that the idea is uh, good, lah, okay? Um, one thing that uh, you may want to try to differentiate is, um, what is important to be said and what is, um, what is assumed to be uh, generally uh, the case for most things. Um, uh, it's, it's not very clear. Let me try to say it differently. <laughs> right, basically, right, give you an example. If you're going to present a, a concept, right, um, uh, don't really tell us that, oh, I've designed this to be safe or usage or intuitive or you know, uh, minimalist in its approach or safe material. You know, don't tell us all of these things because like, every single piece of design needs that. It's almost the implied need to have factor, okay? Um, you, need to, you need to know what is the key distinctive in your project that is not a normal requirement. And then if you just focus on that, I think you make a much better point and a clearer point that uh, keeps people remembering what's different about your project, okay? So this is one thing, okay? Know what to explicitly mention as the one key differentiator um, and then all the other side benefits, uh, leave it to be discovered, right? Uh, most of the time, when we are, you know, uh, uh, we are kind of like interested or convinced by that one uh, big difference. Uh, in fact, the listeners, uh, they, they tend to assume that all the other small factors are taken care of by themselves, right? Uh, yeah, that's, that's usually the case. Okay, so that's uh, one little tip. Uh, I, of course, there are 10,000 tips that we can talk about. Okay. Okay, but uh, let's not go there uh, immediately now because uh, I don't know how much time we have left. This thing cuts off by itself if I'm not wrong. Uh, strangely, we are longer than an hour and seems to be going still. I'm not sure why. Um, okay. Uh, I think there's one or two last questions. Uh, we, it's great that we can cover, I think, everything. Any tips for interview? Tips for interview? Uh, I guess this has come from the teacher. Huh? So... Uh, uh, Firstly, join our Telegram group. <laughs> this is not a plug for that uh, group, okay? Uh, I'm just saying this because uh, I've uh, posted, I think, several days back, a, a rather extensive list that explains to you more in detail uh, how to prepare for this interview, right? And uh, those are the secret tricks, right? Uh, it's in our pinned post in the Telegram group. So uh, go check that out. Um, 
But uh, what I can mention here shortly um, is, uh, you know, firstly, it may not be like an interview interview where, you know, it's a two-way two -way discussion. Uh, we might uh, send you more like a questionnaire which we've, you might reply with videos, okay? Um, so that's because of the whole COVID uh, arrangements and uh, uh, yeah, that might be the arrangement um, to be announced, right? Um, but in, in either case, in person or in a video interview, uh, I think you do want to get yourself uh, um, equipped beforehand, really what design is, uh, how designers think, how design works, right? Uh, so that uh, you're not uh, off tangent with your uh, uh, yeah, you know, discussions in the first place, okay? Um, we do sometimes get students who um, come, you know, maybe the ID is not really the first choice and it's more like a backup. So uh, and that's really obvious to us because, <laughs> because uh, uh, they, they don't seem interested in design in the first place because uh, when you ask them about design, they have misconceptions about it being something like a decorative art, right? Um, and then you know that, uh, okay, this student may not be exactly uh, that uh, interested uh, or might not be applying to, to what... Uh, uh, he or she really uh, understands or wants to get into it. Okay, so so get uh, familiar with that. Um, yeah, is one little tip. Hey Jay, uh, I see you posting the Telegram link. Thanks very much for doing that. Um, the can I just ask you a question? I'm not sure why the the live chat uh, seems to be going on for unlimited duration. I'm not sure is it because we is a new thing in Instagram or not? Um, but. Uh, I can still take some questions. Uh, so, yeah, I don't see any countdown timer coming up, uh, but all right. Uh, will everyone get shortlisted if they are above the IGP? Yes, of course. In fact, uh, but if IGP means that, like, if you, the, the cutoff point, right? Um, uh, of course, that firstly is, is, oh, Telegram Live is unlimited now? Great. Okay, but we'll still kind of like keep it uh, uh, short soon, because uh, Tommy also has to. And, and I have to go home. <laughs> uh, the, the, okay, will everyone get shortlisted if they're above the IGP? If you're talking about the, the cutoff, uh, I'm not super sure the IGP uh, uh, reference here. Um, uh, actually, IGP, okay, you must know, okay, now I recall, IGP is the indica indicative grade profile, right? Okay, you need to know that IGP is based on the previous year. Okay, that's one technicality you need to know first. It's just indicative of what it might be like for this year. Um, and uh, so the cutoff is actually determined by this year's applicants. So I, it's not like a, a scientific equivalent to say last year's one is the cutoff for this year. It's not like that, okay? But it's just indicative. Now, secondly, um, if we talk about uh, what's the IGP or cutoff, it is... After the fact, that means after everyone got in, then we kind of say, okay, what was the cutoff for the for the ones who came in? Uh, so it's after the fact, okay? Now, uh, that said, um, we certainly interview, like I've explained earlier on, a large, much larger number of uh, people uh, than uh, the theoretical cutoff, lah, okay? Or the theoretical intake. So, uh, yes, if you are somewhat... Uh, you know, uh, this is a before, after chicken and egg kind of thing, right? But if, yes, if your score is above the IGP, so to speak, uh, of that year, you, of course, will be shortlisted. In fact, uh, even if you're below it, you will likely be shortlisted um, for the interview. Okay? Hopefully, that answers the question to ZZZ Quok. Um, yeah, so don't get too scared off by uh, the IGP. Um, I would just say that... Um, the ability to do design if you are somewhat shaped or wired for it um, or your interests are there um, such that then it allows you to access a lifetime of uh, a career that fits your passion uh, is very often worth the risk right, of uh, you know, applying for it uh, and then uh, in the worst case you don't get in uh, or even shortlisted because maybe the IGP is too far off, right? Um, at least you know that that attempt has been made, right? Uh, 
being able to operate in a, in in a work that is uh, um, compatible with your passions and your interests and your strengths is, I think, a really uh, significant uh, uh, gain in, in life. Lah. Okay, so yeah, don't don't let the uh, optimization or the risk kind of things, uh, 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 yeah, um, cause you to fall. Uh, you know. Uh, or, or lose out, or miss out on this, okay? Yeah, that's just my general su suggestion. You still have to make your own decision in the end, okay? Uh, okay, teacher questions again. Are there instances where a student who has made a cut for ID not turn out to be a good fit for ID? Of course. Like every other kind of uh, um, discipline, um, you know, uh, there will be students who uh, late bloomers, there will be students who are uh, really um, uh, seem promising at the start, but uh, or even talented, uh, to be honest. Um, now, I mean, my personal belief is that even if you have a certain uh, gifting, certain strengths in an area, right, um, you still have to kind of like uh, work at it to unwrap that, that gift, right? So, uh, so all kinds of reasons might be possible for, for someone to be really, uh, you know, are talented for it, but then never really um, putting in the effort to capitalize on that. Okay, and then of course there are a lot of others who have some latent uh, uh, tendencies um, who have not had a chance to ex uh, uh, stretch that, but but discovered their passion in DID, and then suddenly they they, they blossom. Um, uh, yeah, so that that was a teacher question. Now. Okay, so let me let me see. Yeah. Uh, let me find something for Tommy. Okay, Tommy, you best answer this uh, from Aloysius. How does the school support entrepreneurship activities like Kickstarter? Oh, uh, I mean, previously, Don actually <laughs> had this um, design project uh, yeah, um, uh, regarding like entrepreneurship, like how to take your design a product and take it to kind of like uh, such platforms. But I think NUS itself, um, they are ramping up this entrepreneurship um, like um, platform yeah like helping uh, with, with um, startups and and whatnot if you have an idea and you want to really develop this with a team and um, whatnot I think you can check it out yeah I think um, it's it's good uh, yeah if you really uh, feel uh, there's a there's a space for it um, and you really need to work for it uh, <laughs> yeah, because it's not it's a it's a painful journey in a sense but it's a good experience also yeah um, learning learning um, beyond just designing concepts and really um, um, so that you got a design process but and then you actually have the other half also yeah how, how do you put it in market how, how are you going to get um, uh, things out lah, yeah to the masses yeah so yeah you can i think um, nus has quite a number of resources uh, and they are track, um, advocating for for such um, uh, startups and entrepreneurship yeah Hmm. Uh, NUS is quite, uh, I would say, very supportive of uh, such things, such that, uh, you know, things that are very bureaucratic with regards to sometimes IP and stuff. Um, they've given uh, us at the Kickstarter classes uh, a really easy time with, uh, so that students' projects can just, you know, go up, right? Uh, they, they're very generous arrangements uh, by the school to just let the IP uh, be capitalized by the student. Uh, and, and support their efforts without trying to see that everything belongs to the school or charge them for a uh, high sum for it. Okay, so NUS is really, really supportive of this. Um, and of course, in our own division, um, we find this to be one of the hallmarks of our program. Uh, and we frequently have uh, uh, things like that, not just from the Kickstarter class, but even from different tutors yeah, about how do you get your projects, you know, uh, to a sense of reality, right, uh, where, where, where it's tested with the market. Okay. Um, Let's see. Uh, there's a specific question for you, um, Tommy, from Kim Tan. Kim is a veteran in the design industry, so oh, yeah. it's great. Yeah, it's great to hear him ask this question. Uh, hi, Kim. Uh, and and so, uh, uh, it's, it's super nice to hear a question like that asked to a, a designer who just graduated. Let's see what Tommy has to say. What was the question? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I you don't see the. Okay. Yeah, and, I don't see the. Uh, yeah. Kim asks any daily design habits to share to be creative. Uh, and he specifically asked to you, Tommy. Well, um, I think for myself, um, I think because I'm into the whole Instagram uh, um, platform and the community there, so I kind of see, um, try to see what 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 
other young designers or even like uh, from from elsewhere globally like what they're what they're doing so so and um and also they have like design challenges some some people some certain platforms that actually push that out so um i try to keep up to date with those and and, and at the same time also um practice those skills are uh, like be it like just sketching challenge like those weekly vendor weekly uh, challenges um, you can check them out uh. yeah so things like that they gives you um, uh, opportunity to actually um, 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 practice that yeah to that kind of creativity with those prompts uh. yeah so because sometimes i mean we all cooked up at home um, we don't really get that kind of outlet <laughs> yeah that kind of um, inspiration so that's kind of like the the virtual window that that I kind of have, yeah, uh, in 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 getting that kind of uh, creative creativity going, uh, yeah. So I kind of like only after graduating that I kind of like try to make it more of a habit, yeah. Because during during my time in DID, I um it's more of like yeah working on projects, uh, So yeah, I would say that's one one of the key things that I try to get more involved in, and seeing what um, outside of Singapore, you know, um, um, in terms of now everybody can't travel, so what are the differences and the kind of dialogues uh, that people have uh, yeah, in the design community. Hmm. Okay, I think let's do the two last questions that are still active in the chat and then let's call it the mic, okay? Um, sure. Quick one, will classes be conducted in person or mostly online in lieu of the pandemic? Um, it's a hybrid. Uh, we are, uh, most of the classes are, have resumed back to be in person now. Um, but uh, the pandemic has definitely taught us to be very effective in even online classes. And so we sometimes uh, practice this hy uh, hybrid of both, right? And we try to tap on the best of both things. In fact, uh, the, this whole pandemic, to a certain extent, um, as much as uh, it has created a lot of sufferings for a lot of people, it's also a very interesting context for designers. And in design education, we use this somewhat as a, a new ground you know, to figure out um, how to teach uh, in maybe even more interesting ways than in person when we have the digital uh, involved. And so we going that way, we are not about to give up that immediately. In fact, uh, we will be trying to increasingly use both uh, to be, uh, in the first place, uh, tap on the best of both worlds. And in the second uh, reason for it is to be resilient against another pandemic like that, we can switch immediately. Okay, so uh, that's uh, the answer to you. Uh, but the um, idea, whether or not in person or online, you will find that the, the teacher to student ratio is very intimate, right? Uh, it's very much always like a conversation, right? Uh, so I think you won't find that distance, whether it's in person or, or online, okay? Uh, okay, last question here. What are the alternative routes to take if one doesn't make it into the course? Internships, etc. cetera. Um, if you don't make it into the course, uh, the question is, uh, firstly, are you making it into NUS, right? If you're making it into NUS uh, in the first place, uh, good news for you is that, uh, you know, starting from this coming semester, you will see with that new announcement, uh, we will be increasingly, uh, uh, like with the engineering school, uh, spreading uh, design thinking as, uh, as a foundational curriculum uh, for, for at least uh, at, at this point in time with the uh, two schools. Okay, so you will definitely get exposed to design. Um, now, on the other hand, um, to be very honest, design is one of those uh, skill sets that can be self-taught. Okay, I'm saying this. Uh, I'm saying this uh, not not to, to ask you. Hey, I don't need to come design anymore. You know, uh, coming to a school like DID, you have uh, some advantages of that kind of dialogue uh, that you're placed in with uh, the the teachers. Right and the students, the the, 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 the grappling, you know, with yourself and with others, and of course the projects are, uh, and mentoring is is uh, great. Uh, um, to me, I think uh, one of the best things. In fact, to be very very frank, uh, as teachers, I think we find that teaching in DID and why we teach in DID still, right, is because we are learning every day from every other teacher and also from all the students and the projects. Okay, so that's a uh, Probably one of the good reasons to be here. Uh, now, uh, back to your question, sorry. <laughs> it's too interested in selling the course. But anyway, um, uh, alternative routes. Uh, this, therefore, I would say, to be honest, uh, you can uh, self-teach design uh, to a good extent. Right? And uh, you can, of course, learn from a lot of resources like Tommy has mentioned. Um, uh, yeah. And 
And certainly, if you uh, build a portfolio, you know, uh, through doing your own projects, uh, and your portfolio is compelling, you can apply to almost any design jobs. I think, um, in yeah, because that's what the companies are looking at. You know, uh, all my uh, thirteen years of working in design, nobody has ever asked me for my certificate before. Nobody, okay? Nobody at all has ever asked me whether they come from the university, right? It was just all portfolio. So it's actually really possible, right, to build your portfolio and still work in design, okay? Of course, there are some institutions whereby the, the qualifications are needed, right? But, um, uh, yeah, most of the time in many, or rather many times in design field, it's just not uh, the case. Aloysius, thank you that DID is your only choice. Uh, I hope, yeah, we see you here also, right? Um, Yep, I see the comment. Okay, that's it, right? I think we've uh, answered all the questions. Tommy, I uh, just want right. to give you a bit of a platform here because uh, sometimes I say too much things. Um, is there anything else you want to share with everybody? Uh, just anything that you want to say to any, everyone who is here? Uh, not really. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I mean... Um, yeah, I mean, um, for those who are coming in or like you secure a spot already, um, don't worry too much about um, uh, um, being in this uncomfortable zone. Yeah, especially uh, if you're unfamiliar with like your design skills, uh, who's better, you know, um, um, and all this kind of comparisons uh, that, that, that will come to you. Uh, it's very natural, but uh, I think you're just willing to, to go and discover yourself, like what, what your, your interest is. And um, um, and really put that practice in into play. Also, I think that's uh, um, a very good start. Yeah, for especially coming into DID la. Yeah, so so that you kind of like negate all this negativity. Also, yeah, when you start working on projects. Yeah, so I think that's pretty much. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Toby, and thank you everyone for right. being uh, with us. Okay. Uh, we'll right. see you soon. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you.